welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host, uh, Dr. Lupinder Kumar, and today we will be understanding the structure of an antibody. It is also known as immunoglobulin. They are, these are uh, globular molecules, so that is that is why they are they are known as uh, globulins, and they are part of immune system. So that is why they are also known as immunoglobulins. It's basically, as you can also see, it's a Y-shaped protein produced by the immune system in response against the foreign substances called antigens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take individual component and I'll try to design this structure again. Meantime, what you'll see that uh, I'll also summarize the functions uh, of individual components. So that will help you to understand this, this structure in detail, right? And uh, before we start this video, I have a quick request to make. If you are new to the channel, then please do subscribe to the channel and help us so that we can create more content like this. Okay, let's move on to the to the next page where we will redesign this entire illustration. Uh, I don't know how much uh, good job I'm going to do creating this uh, illustration, but I'll try my best. Uh, all right, I have individual components uh, designed, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so as you can see, we have everything. We'll start uh, discussing uh, what is an antibody, why it is important, uh, important, why we need immunoglobulins in our system, and what are their functions, everything, what are the different types of uh, antibodies, we'll also understand that, right? So we'll, we'll start with, the, with the, the basic layout that I've already created, and uh, you might have seen this. Uh, this is just the impression of uh, the Y-shaped antibody structure. So you can see it will have three domains. So this is the top uh, section of the letter Y, right? And this is uh, the, uh, the region of the antibody, which is, which is uh, also known as FC region. We'll understand that in detail. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the types of antibodies. Antibodies, there are mainly uh, five different types of antibodies are known, different classes, IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG, and IgM. And uh, I'll try to make individual videos on all these uh, specific classes, and we'll also discuss their function, right? Each type has a unique role in the immune, in immune response, and uh, the role is basically to neutralize toxins, neutralize pathogens, so that uh, our body uh, remains uh, unaffected and uh, we live basically the healthy healthy life so antibodies they are consist of uh, identical heavy chains and we will we'll design them and also identical light chains and what are their their components we'll also see that right so we'll start with the uh, let's let's uh, start with the uh, the first structure which is which is this now you can see i've written uh, i've written vh in this case now I'll, I'll explain what is v and what is h but I have to arrange it. I might have to play around a little bit, play around with the, with these um, uh, illustrations, as you can see. So something like this. Let's see. Right. So V H variable region of heavy chain. So that is what it is representing. So this is the variable region of the the heavy chain, and in this case, what you are seeing is. Uh, uh, the domain which is variable uh, means it, it basically will, will bind with the antigen. That is why it's variable because antigen will change. Uh, so the region of the antibody which, which changes is the variable region. Uh, okay. It will be more easier for you if I, if I draw other structures. Now I'm taking the second one which is CH. So C indicates the, the constant region. I'll rearrange it. Okay. So don't, don't worry. I'll re uh, rearrange it. It becomes... Uh, I think I have to move this. So I'll, I'll use this later on. First, I have to like rearrange these these structures nicely. Otherwise, uh, it will give me a lot of hard time, right? So let's see, they are, they are identical. So, okay. So this is how they are they are arranged, right? So you have uh, the, the variable re region of heavy chain and this one is constant region of heavy chain one. You will have CH1, two, three. So that means there will be uh, the other regions I'll show you, uh, which which is known as CH1, CH2, CH3, they are constant region. Means here uh, the changes in the structure uh, of antibody will not uh, be significant. Means the composition of amino acids, and we all know that proteins they are made up of amino acids, and composition composition of amino acid will not vary significantly in this case as compared to this one. It has to vary because th this is the section which will bind with antigen, and antigen will change. So that is why you will have specific antibody against a specific antigen, right? Okay, so this is part one. So successfully, we have created uh, the the top part of the heavy chain. Now I'll move to the second one, which is uh, the interconnecting part. So this is like this. 
usually, right? So you will have, uh, I'll just try to rearrange it in a, in a nice manner. So, okay, so this is again the region, it's also known as hinge region. I'll, I'll put uh, the illustration uh, lab label for that region also, but let me complete this structure. Okay, before that, why, uh, yeah, let's, let's get other domains. So these are different domains of the antibody. So as I told you that you will have CH1, CH2. Again, it's the constant region of the antibody of heavy chain. So antibody will have light chains, antibody will have heavy chains. So I'm starting with heavy chain of the antibody. And uh, as you can see, the heavy chain is uh, big in size as compared to the light chain that I'll, uh, that I'll design later. Okay, that is CH2. And, and then let's design uh, the CH3 part. So this is the third region and this is how it is attached. So antibody or immunoglobulin will, will have heavy chains like this. So two identical heavy chain, that is what I told you, right? And in the same way, we'll have two identical light chains. But before that, let me explain this. And also let me, uh, let me label this. Okay, let me also label this. So this is the heavy chain entire this blue color this is uh, as you can clearly see uh, you have two identical heavy chains right you have variable region where variation in the amino acids will be there you have constant regions where uh, the variation in the amino acid will be significantly less okay now so this will match with other antibody also which will be against which will be raised against a different antigen Okay, so now let's uh, let's also understand a little bit about uh, the heavy chain. So heavy chain contain constant region and variable region. So constant region is is uh, basically this region, that region, and most of the FC region. This is the F FC region, right? I will will talk about that FC region, and this is the FAB region. And as you can clearly see, it's a the Y shaped structure, and we also need to have our light chains. So now let's move on to the light chains. In the same way. In the same manner, we had uh, the our uh, uh, variable heavy chains. We'll also have variable light chains. I have to move this label a little bit on the top, okay, uh, and 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 then move it like this so that we have visible uh, light chain. Okay, so I think I can move it over here so it's more visible. So this is the heavy chain. Okay, let's move it right over here. And this is our heavy chain. And this is uh, label now. And this is the green green colored as the light chain variable region. And in the same way, it will also have uh, the second region, which is constant region. Right, so this is the constant region. Let's see how much uh, good job I can do in uh, aligning them. Okay, so that is the best I can do, I guess, yeah. Okay, now they are aligned. So these are the light chains. Let's move a little bit uh, away. Okay, these are the light chains and uh, these two are the light chains and this uh, blue color is the heavy chain. So let me also label the, these two so I can quickly just utilize this space. So this is the light chain, the green, which is green in color. Correct, okay, so now let's, <clears throat> sorry, let's uh, use this if I can let me use this uh, label for the light chain. So these are the light chain and light chain will also have variable as well as constant region. All right, right? So antibody, we have already understood. It is also known as immunoglobulin. It's a vital component of the immune system, uh, which is responsible for recognizing and neutralizing foreign invaders. So that is the function, main function of the antibody. They can neutralize viruses, they can neutralize toxins, and they can neutralize bacteria and so on. There are different types of antibodies that we have uh, already understood. We understood the heavy and light chain. Uh, as we all know, antibody is composed of two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains. So that is clear. It will have uh, FAB and FC region. Next is the disulfide bonding. Okay, so since I've already created, I don't know how much uh, nicely they will they will align. Uh, but seems like, uh, I mean, if I can if I can do it like this, uh, hopefully you can understand that uh, this is the alignment. Okay, all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything so that uh, I can move these on the back side. Okay, so one more time, I guess. Yeah, okay. 
All right, now you can see these red color bonds, what, what basically is happening over here is uh, these structures, they are the disulfide bonds. These are the disulfide bonds between the light chain and the heavy chain and also between the heavy chains because this entire structures need this entire structure need to be stabilized. Otherwise, it will be very difficult for these uh, domains or chains to stay close. So we have strong uh, disulfide bonding between these chains and because of that, they stay intact. And disulfide bonds, they are covalent bonds. So it's a strong, uh, strong interaction between the sulfur atoms in the cysteine residues. So you'll have uh, cysteine residues in these regions and they will form the disulfide bonding, uh, means the bond between two sulfur atoms. And these bonds, they stabilize the overall antibody structure, contributing towards its uh, integrity as well as towards its functionality, right? So now let's talk about FC region. This is the FC region. And let me first label it. Okay, so I don't know uh, if I can uh, if I can use this to correctly show you the FC region. So I think uh, yeah, I think uh, this this will do a good job. This from here up until here, you have FC region, and then uh, you have FAB region, which is another part of the antibody starting from here from top, and it will basically go up until here, like this. So that region is FC, this one is FAB region. Now, what happens in FAB region, or it's also known as fragment antigen binding region, that is why FAB region, antigen binding region, uh, because you have binding site for antigen right over here in this variable region. So that is why this is the fragment for antigen binding region. Okay, and uh, it contains antigen binding site, which I've already told you, and I'll also explain it later. It recognizes and bind to unique epitopes on the surface of antigens. So antigen will have a specific regions, unique regions, and they can elicit immune response. And those regions are known as epitopes. And those epitopes can bind in these regions. And this is how antibody can recognize a specific antigen. Okay, next is, let's let's move on to uh, the uh, labeling this one, which is disulfide bonding, right? So let me also label this because we need to create uh, this entire illustration. That is the purpose, right? So this red colored bonding is the disulfide bonding. So I can label both of them so for better clarity. I'll move it back a little bit and then it will be labeled and I have to move it like this. Okay, so as you can clearly see these red colored lines, they are the disulfide bonds. Okay, and now next is antigen, antigen binding site. Now let me use uh, this to show you, just imagine these are two antigenic uh, uh, epitopes, right? They have the ability to bind to this region. And because, because they can bind to this region, this region is known as antigen binding site. So this white colored molecule is not antigen binding site. This is antigen, actual antigen. Now when it goes and binds to the region uh, into the antibody, which recognizes this epitope, that region is known as antigen binding site. Correct, and the white molecule or white structure that you're seeing is the antigen. So let me also label this and I'll also explain what antigen is. Those who are not aware of that one, but if you've seen my videos, I make so I made so many videos on, on these topics. So I hope uh, now it is very much clear to you what is antigen. Right, so antigen uh, binding site is clear. Now what is an antigen? Antigen is an any, any, foreign substance that can interact with the immune system and it can uh, including pathogens, bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, any non-infectious substance also like, like toxins, antigens and even, even components from the, the transplanted tissues can also act as uh, an antigen. The immune system recognizes these antigens as non-self and those are the molecules which are non-self molecules and also interact with the immune system they cause the production of antibodies and then antibodies, they can interact and neutralize uh, those molecules. So this is how it works, right? So next, next we have antigen is clear. Next we have uh, these two molecules. So I thought this is also one of the important structural uh, component of the antibody. So I thought I should uh, also men mention these, uh, these structures. What are these? As you can see, these are carbohydrate molecules. I just place uh, for convenience over here. These are carbohydrate molecules in the antibodies. Antibodies also contains these carbohydrate molecules attached to the FC region. And these molecules, they modulate antibody stability, solubility also, and also the half-life. So 
to stabilize this entire structure or also uh, help in other properties like uh, solubility as well as the half-life half as well as the interaction of uh, the antibody with the immune cell uh, in immune cells these antibodies uh, are tagged with these carbohydrate molecules right so we also need, uh, need to label these molecules to complete our structure this is the carbohydrate molecule okay so let me label the, these two molecules so now one is over here second one is over there uh, okay and uh, we have already discussed the uh, the the function next is the hinge region hinge region is this region which is the most flexible part of the antibody hinge region right this one this region is the hinge region and the role of hinge region it's a flexible segment of the antibody that connects the fab region with fc region and the flexibility this this specific moment of these domains this flexibility allows the antibody to to undergo conformational changes if antibodies can go conform, conformational changes they have the high ability to interact with the antigens and that is why it helps in their optimal antigen binding as well as effective functions correct uh, now i'm just left with my my final il illustration so hopefully it is uh, it is behind exactly behind these so this is basically representing that it has uh, this three domain uh, kind of uh, structure which is a y-shaped structure look at this our entire structure is now complete and we can see antibody uh, is bound to the antigen molecules and this is how they fit in so they already have a site over here and the antigens they will come and bind right on these sites and this is how they will now will not be available uh, for any other functions right so i think uh, we have done a good job uh, on, on creating this one as well as understanding the antibody structure let's see how our first structure was so yeah this looks very very similar here i have only one antigen uh, antigen bound to the antibody here we have two antigens they are bound to the antibody and next is i'm just creating uh, the the you know image for this one so that you can see that image in the in the video so what we have understood is antibody structure and function in detail right hopefully this entire video is uh, helpful for you to understand the antibody structure in detail because what we have done is we we basically broke down this this uh, topic and we started from individual components and then we understood everything in detail structure as well as function i've tried my best and if you want to see more videos like this then please do subscribe to our channel please comment on the videos and also uh, if you have liked something then please do post your suggestions in the comment section i'll meet you in the next video till then take care everyone and happy studying